Howdy, howdy, and welcome to my bloody Judy with your final forgets, myself, Zachary Patton Garcia. And Ian Carlos Crawford. And joining us today for part two of our Scream coverage, we have our opening chills. Hi, I'm Angel. I'm editor at Fangoria.com, and I also do the Horror Girl Problems podcast. And hi, I am Gabe Gonzalez. I'm a comedian, writer, and actor. Uh, you might have heard me on the Critty podcast or seen me on Scruff. Um, I am now unemployed and doing a lot of stand-up, uh, so I've got time to rewatch Scream. Thanks for having me. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Shit, that's where I know you from, Scruff. <laughs> Scruff. Yeah, yeah, naturally. Oh, my God. Wait, I yeah, like yeah, that yeah. you said you might have seen me on Scruff as if, like, on the grid, but, like, you did host Oh, the, yeah, yeah, the yeah. Sorry, show. I was not specific. Honestly, that covers all bases. Yes, I used to host a queer trivia show on Scruff. Um, I am now hosting, it is a fully different type of uh, style, but I'm now hosting a monthly comedy show at a theater called Caveat New York called The Lavender Scare, which is also a, a queer comedy show. Um, no buzzers. Whoever throws the first brick gets to answer the question. <laughs> I, I was thinking the scruff thing was a bit, but I guess you were really doing things on the scruff. It could be. <laughs> I, I was employed, but also regularly. Using, He's still there. So He's still there. It applies guys. either way. Yeah. He's taking scream <laughs> questions over on the scruff. <laughs> I really so, am. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're here to talk about the middle part of yeah. the movie which is still a good hour of the movie uh we've been breaking the movie up into three parts yeah. um this is going to be part two where we start we start off with sydney it's our first introduction because we don't meet her in the opening we meet her post drew barrymore's gruesome death um yeah what it angel i'm curious i i mean gabe i know what you think uh but angel i'm curious like what what do you think of Sydney as a final girl? She is my absolute number one favorite final girl of all is time. Is she? So, uh, she really is, yes. Uh, <laughs> is your number two? I need to know your number two then. I need to know where you're going. Uh, number two, I have a lot of ties. I feel like it's like a 10 way tie for number two. But you know what? Well, a recent final girl was. Um, this is now I just blanked on her name. So how, how favorite can she be? Grace from Ready or Not. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Good that was okay. a good like a, a good modern one. Okay. But yeah, of course, you've got all the classics that are kind of like my number two. <laughs> that That's actually how Zach and I like one of our first conversations. He was like, who's your final girl? And I was like, I guess Gail doesn't count. So Sydney, but Gail and Sydney. <laughs> yeah. we were talking about As a fi team. <laughs> final girl outfits. They are a team. They are the final girl of the movie, yes. right? They're and like, then, like one entity. <laughs> yeah. And then Dewey's there somewhere. He's just in the background <laughs> somewhere. Um, so when we talk about this movie, when everybody talks about this movie, usually, I mean, if they share it online, whatever, we always see the the opening, right? We always see the opening and then we'll see, you know, the end with the kitchen or Gail, like, you know, forgetting to turn the safety off, or, you know, whatever that ending is. But you don't always see as much talk around the middle part. Um, how do you think it sort of tracks? Because this is this is carrying the plot, right? This is carrying the story. Well, just yeah, well, we talk, a general opinion. I know. Yeah. <laughs> no. Well, Ian and I have talked about this. That opening scene is like sort of the perfect encapsulation of the theme and the vibe. Yeah. Um, it's a sort of fake out you could only get away with, like in a pre-Twitter era. Obviously, <laughs> like that stunt casting, that twist was major, <laughs> and it was not ruined for me before I saw it. It's been ruined for so many people. Um, and so I think it was a, a really cool opportunity to just like really set the tone like know that it would be an homage to horror movies like that litany of lists during the conversation feels like such a like kevin williamson like jerk off moment where it's like i love all of these um <laughs> and then we just get like this crazy twist and the most brutal like disgusting like i hate when like intestines are visible so i was like really grossed out i was like oh not intestines <laughs> um and so it's like wild because i think that that is kind of like the easiest you know what i mean if you had to pick like a visual sound bite of this movie i think that opening scene is like it right it's going to tell you everything you need to know without maybe spoiling the plot itself yeah. um and i do think you know i don't know it's interesting because this middle part is like it feels like a lot of inconsequential deaths just like random like killing around to, to fill time and i know i think there was some interview where they said that henry winkler's death was originally not planned and was put in because like no one died for a half hour in the original <laughs> version of the <laughs> script and they were like that's too long for people not to die um, but I like it. I mean, I think it's like, it does such a good job of building the tension. And the more we get to learn about Sydney and like her relationship, I still don't understand why she's friends with half of those people, but I do appreciate a slow, uh, burn. Uh, and I, I don't know. I like the introduction of Sydney. She's, 
She's a precocious teen. Okay, yeah. before Riverdale, <laughs> they had Nev Campbell. Um, but I appreciated it. I very much related. I was like friends with all my friends' moms. I was a precocious teen. I was gay, but um, yeah. I was gonna say that's just say yeah, gay. Like, like, just say friends gay. with Sydney's yeah. whore mother. You're getting all the gossip. Yes. Sydney's whore mother. I spoke at Sydney's mom's funeral. <laughs> Oh my God! You did the eulogy in that beautiful song. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. 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 Nice to see you. Amazing. I, you know, I one of the there. I, we talked about this at the live show game, but like, there's always new things to pick up with this movie. And the thing that I just realized, um, like recently, I think when I when it was so, Scream has jumped from streaming service to streaming service, and continues to jump. Um, I just realized that. They play like a very weird, slowed down version of um, the Blue Oyster Cult song. Um, <gasps> Don't fear the Reaper. Don't fear the Reaper. Yes. I only just realized that when they're making right. out. When they're making out in her bedroom in this first really? scene, yeah, <laughs> it's like very low, but that's what they're playing. Is there music during that scene? I don't even remember any music. <laughs> I know, right? I'm sure. Tra- oh, okay. It, it sounds very like. Almost like Sydney's dad's playing it downstairs, and that's how like low mm-hmm. it is. But I think it's because like so this is my desk, and my TV's literally like I'm touching my TV, and so I think I heard it for the first time. So I was like, wait a minute, that sounds like oh it is yeah. um, a very weird song choice, like a slowed down version of that to play while they're making out. Okay, hmm. <laughs> I just remember Sydney's creepy dad trying to get into a room, you know, trying to <laughs> shimmy the door open. Um, we do get his kind of like outro right is you know this is very done very quickly that the parents have to be like gone gone right. um because tatum's mom isn't going to be really be involved any anywhere but you would ask like what's happening with sydney's dad like if she's getting attacked you know where's sydney's dad um thank so we're you yeah that, we're getting that sort of setup of maybe he's the killer we're getting a lot of red herrings in here right or like you know question marks thrown in in this like second half i do think this movie I mean, it's the first one. It does a lot of the things best in the series, but this movie did the best with red herrings, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, Like, I think in the rest of them, it was kind of like, I just wasn't sure, but there wasn't like a lot of red herrings. And I remember this one, I... I think my first like time I saw this, I was positive it was the sheriff. Yeah. Like I was like, it's the really? sheriff. He's got the boots. It's got to be the sheriff. He's strong enough to do this shit. Like he can beat up these teens. And yeah. and, it's not. and it's so weird too, right? Because you watch it back on rewatches, and it's so obviously them. There, there's even <laughs> yeah. shots of them looking at each other and kind of doing like a, you know, yeah. it's it's so obvious. But they played as red herrings at the time yeah. because everything is a red herring. Everyone's mm-hmm. doing fucking weird looks. Everyone has the boots and is like makes a yeah. weird little eyebrow or like everybody has the scream boots. Everybody has the scream boots. It's wild too because like I thought the first time I watched it, Billy comes in so soon after the attack. I was like, oh, that's a red herring. Yeah. There's no way. Like that's too obvious. And then you get to the end, you're like, oh. there was a while where I was like, I thought it was Randy. I was like, this is an intellectual film. Like the dude that's obsessed with horror movies is clearly killing everybody. You know, what I was just like really trying. Kind of, oh, yeah. Did anybody? Like, I'm the first to admit it. If this was a scary <laughs> movie, I'd be the prime suspect. <laughs> did anybody expect the two killer sort of reveal, or did you think? Were you just the whole entire time looking for one specific person? I'm trying to think back to mm. 1996 when I first saw this. <laughs> it was my first slasher, though. You know, so was it? I don't think I suspected two. I suspected every single fucking person in the whole goddamn movie. <laughs> At, at one point or another, but I don't think I, I suspected two, but going back to that weird version of Don't Fear the Reaper, it's actually kind of perfect because she's making out with the fucking Reaper, yeah. you know? They, and then there's yeah. that little, they throw to that line like Romeo and Juliet right as he's going to climb back out of the window. And I like to think that was on purpose because it's pretty cool. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I, I do, like, totally think that's all on purpose. It's Wes Craven and everything. Was right. On everything purpose. is on I mean, purpose. No. <laughs> Um, and like, I, I think they, the, the thing that this movie does really well is like these, I mean, granted, I don't know. The other day I looked up the, the age difference between Courtney Cox and Ev Campbell. Cause even as a kid seeing this, they felt the same age to me. Yeah. Um, but they are significantly like, I think Courtney Cox is like 11 like 10 years, years older. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Something it's, like it's that. There. Um, and they really like, they do a good job of just like 
she's kind of like, you know, a harmless teen who's like, you know, wants to maybe like, she has her like, is it the Indigo Girls poster on the wall? And like, <laughs> she just wants to like chill and make out with her boyfriend. And yeah. he's trying to like pressure her into having sex, but she's like, I'm not ready yet. And like, I don't know. I, I think it does a good job of setting these like teens as like, they're still like verbose teens, but they're not ridiculous right they're not like, annoying you know what yeah. what because you, they were usually bring in a final girl right and it's the entire friend group pressuring her to have sex and just like just go do it right like lose your v card and you'll be a woman like us right um <laughs> it's really like just within sydney like he wants to have sex but it really you know the, that whole thing plays out with her and her whole storyline between her and her mother right like her decision to have sex comes from hearing all these things about her mother and having a talk with Tatum about her mother. And, you know, um, and it's, I, I do like this friend group in that they're not, you know, really pressuring anybody to do anything. They're not pressuring each other to drink, to do anything. They're all just kind of doing their own thing and hanging out. Did you guys have similar minded friends in high school or were your friends like as different as like this group is? Cause they're all pretty different. I think my group was pretty different. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you would like look at us walking down the street and be like, oh, that's definitely like a group. <laughs> like yeah. if you saw separately. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my friend group was like cobbled together from like speech and debate and theater. So we were like, <laughs> we were all very different, but like theater kids yeah. are notoriously horny. So it was like half of us <laughs> were like deeply chased and the other half like had a notebook filled with names. You know what I mean? Yeah. You were the chased one. You got, you got it all white on, right? Sure. You were the chased one. Yeah. Let's go with that. It's <laughs> also that. a theater I kid. My mom's listening. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't have access to the light booth after hours. Not at all. <laughs> I was a theater kid hanging out on the catwalk, but I won't tell you which group I fell into. <laughs> <laughs> I see. I my friend group was pretty different, but I hung out with all the like the like I, the, the the teens that were like too cool to listen to the radio and listen to pop punk and like all that shit. Mm -hmm. um, and at the time, which is I feel like everyone loves this fun fact about me. I was straight edge, but I hung out with all the stoners. So like they would all be getting high like upstairs or like one of them had like a roof access you could climb out through her, like a roof um and they would like get stoned on the roof and then come back in but i literally would just be like that's fine and just like hang out with them while they were high and like he was wanting to be the final girl he's he's like i can't do it guys i can't do it <laughs> there are rules to these things <laughs> <laughs> I was I was busy experimenting with heterosexuality back then. No. So that was the drug. You're like, this is yeah, far that, enough yeah. experimentation. <laughs> also, same enough. shit. I yeah. hung out with a lot of stoners too, but I wasn't into it. Maybe that's why. I was also experimenting with heterosexuality. <laughs> we were we were yeah, we had our own like things going yeah. on. And like Sydney, I didn't really want to make out with my boyfriend and I had my indigo poster <laughs> on the thing. I'm like, duh. <laughs> that's the subtext. Perfect. <laughs> Love that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That'll be the new scream is Gail and Sydney are dating and I would I am it. here for it. <laughs> right? What a power couple. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, so uh, Gabe, not to I think I interrupted you. No, yeah. no, I was gonna say not to hijack the questioning here because I am not hosting, but going back to this question of like the archetypes in the group, which friend do you most self-identify with? Like if you were in Scream, which archetype do you think you would fit from this? Now or friend? then? That's, right now, because okay. we were like, I was in middle school when I saw it for the first time. So like I was not even, but I think I know who I'd be now. I would absolutely be the Randy. I feel like I a Randy, Randy Sydney hybrid, probably. Yeah. Um, back then, probably more of a Tatum or a Stu. Um, sure. a hybrid of those two. Oh, wow. But I've calmed I've calmed down in my You age. were a Stu Oh, yeah. right. Damn. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was just that, you know, everything's a joke and you know, okay, do, do anything. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, Angel. Well, who would you be? I'm 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 not sure. I feel like everyone would want to say this, but I, I feel like Sydney, but yeah. I'm gonna go with probably <laughs> love child of like Sydney and Randy is probably more accurate. Okay. Yeah. Secretly I think, a Billy. <laughs> I, <laughs> I think back then, Sydney, Randy. And maybe now I would be like Tatum, Randy. <laughs> you know, that's I a could good see it. I could see yeah. it. Yeah. There if I'm know. at a gay bar, I'm a Tatum. If I were in a, a movie that where my friends are getting killed, created by a straight person, I'd definitely be the Randy, though. 
Ian stands up and he's got the skirt on. Yeah. <laughs> From the movie directly. The chartreuse I shirt. When she's, uh... <laughs> this is why I instantly loved you all, a bunch of Tatums, because I, there's that line where Tatum was like, Billy uh, and his penis do not deserve you. And I'm like, I love you so much. <laughs> what it, like, it, like, we talk about Sydney as this wonderful character, but what about Tatum? Tatum is Tatum. a star of this movie. A I plus. wonder if they'd known the reaction post you know the release of it that if they would have kept her around for for the sequel i mean i think that's the thing i would say scream 2 maybe is the only one that doesn't have a character that like is a new character that you love so much that dies Mm -hmm. like they have randy who is a character that you love so i guess maybe he fills that spot but like every one of the movies has that tatum right because there's tatum and i guess randy And in Scream 3, there's Parker Posey, who is, like, stealing every scene, and you don't want her to die. And there's Kirby in Scream 4, who you, like, no one, everyone wants to believe is alive. Like, I feel like that's one thing Scream does really well, is it's not just quite cannon fodder. It's, like, you also love these characters, and, like, some of them do have to die, right? But I, yeah, I think, so the next day at school, we get Tatum basically giving Sydney the rundown. And I think uh, Sydney and Tatum are really good. Like that feels like high school best friends Mm -hmm. where, cause they are very different, but like Tatum is very protective of her. And I, I like that. Like Tatum, like you said, Tatum says like Billy and his penis do not deserve you in a lesser written movie. Tatum just would have been like, Oh my God, have sex with Billy. But like, Tatum's like, no, Billy sucks. Don't Tatum would have been would have been the cheerleader in the bathroom, right? Like that mm. was who she He's such a babe. Your bubble yeah. butt boyfriend. Go yeah. fuck him. Yeah. <laughs> but she's got so much to mention in just this this, you know, one movie, you know. Um, I'm sure she like there's a reason Sydney is such good friends with her. Well, I think that's yeah. what's fun too is that they don't feel like the popular kids. You know what I mean? Like yeah. they don't feel like they should be the leads. They're not the jock, the cheerleader, uh, as cleanly cut as that. And so it's I don't know. It's just sort of interesting to see this group that's like kind of playing with these archetypes, but they feel more fully realized. They feel more fully yeah. formed. Yeah, they're the yeah, every, feel like, every group, right? Yeah, you yeah. feel like you could be friends with. You could yeah. walk up to them and you would actually start talking to them and befriend them. Like if you were the new kid at school. That might be who you go and sit with, and that's your friend group for high school, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. Billy would freak me the fuck out, but I would definitely I'd try to be Tatum and, and uh, Sydney's best gay friend. That Just because be my... he makes psychotic eyebrows. I mean, what? <laughs> he would stalk you a couple places. Just show up behind you in the, in the grocery store, in the video store. He's a movie lover. I mean, I think you guys would have things to talk about. I'm just saying. He'd be like, oh, my God, Zach, I think Billy has a crush on me that I murdered the next day. Uh, no, like, oh, he shit. has great hair. He knows a lot about movies. Perfect. You know what's great about this also? is that you know we usually get like the opening kill scene right like that's nothing new um you get the opening kill scene and then it's like a 10-year jump or like a five-year jump you know that was our established and then we've got you know bring us into present but now this is much more this movie is so much like true crime in that you know we see the follow-up we see how the police are reacting to this murder and like sydney goes into class and sees the empty desk seat like that says so much and they don't even have to have a whole bunch of dialogue around it she just sees it she just eyes it and then has to go in for questioning and you know her and her friends are talking outside by the fountain about you know this murder and it's just it feels so realistic in that way yeah, that and like, super fucked me up when yeah. I was a kid and saw that. I think I was, it was, like I said, it was my first slasher. So I didn't have like all of these tropes to draw from yeah. that to understand like that this is like a certain way that you do things. And I just remember being so fucking sad. And plus yeah. I love Drew Barrymore, you know? So I was Who doesn't, like, right? Yeah. Right? <laughs> so that opening scene, I was like, oh my God. And it's fucking brutal. They don't just kill her yeah. off. It's like in the most brutal way. I was too young to be watching this. So I'm just like fascinated and horrified. And then like you said, cutting to that aftermath of like, she sat next to me in English and fucking Tatum's like, well, not anymore. Like what the yeah. fuck? <laughs> <laughs> like this is, this is grim, but like I can remember uh, someone passed away when I was in school and I, all I could think of was that. Mm-hmm. Like I remember like, cause the guy was like my partner in religion. Cause I went to a Catholic high school for two years. And like, I remember being like, oh, this is like, just like in like that was all I the only reference I had for like Mm -hmm. something like that was like scream and like he was the seat next to me um yeah and they like they like grounded in reality while it's still a like 
fantastical slasher horror movie where Ghostface can move faster than most humans, but like they do a good job of grounding it in reality, right? Mm -hmm. Can he move faster than most humans, though? I don't think so because there's there's two of them, so they're that's like true. dipping well, in Darden, why. and then when we see them, illusion. yeah. When we, <laughs> Michael Myers, there could be two of them. Has anybody oh. ever asked that question? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it just, it, and this in itself sets up its own trope, right? Because every movie after this, every screen movie after this has the the post-death like scene where the teenagers are talking about it or whoever's right, yeah. talking about the death and they're making like, you know, wisecracks about it and stuff like that. And it doesn't just, it just doesn't work as well here um, as it does here, because here it's just like, you know, what do, what do you and your friends talk about, about somebody who just got murdered at your high school? Like, how are you supposed to go about that? And like, do you take it seriously? Because nobody takes it seriously. There's curfew in effect. Everybody gets to a party, you know, nobody's taking it seriously. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's so that's that's why I think it's important, especially in this movie, that it is still like the next day. Yeah, because I think that this movie keeps it a little bit more realistic where like it's still the next day. Like we see Gail like reporting on the like scene um, and we see their news reporters all over. But like they're not quite taking it as seriously yet because it just they're thinking of it as like isolated, whatever. And that makes sense. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, OK, sure. Um you know, I was thinking about this uh, for our live show. I said this, game, but like in Chucky, which Zach and I loved, I love Chucky, but like. I just the finished a TV series. Mm -hmm. So, so good, good, right? Like so it. Good. Yeah. yeah. The yes. principal is beheaded in like one of the best scenes, but like then they're in school the next day. And it's like the principal was just beheaded on stage <laughs> in the high school auditorium. As it rolls probably... out into the audience. <laughs> <laughs> it happens for every death too. They just next up is like, oh, well, you know. And um, like with Scream, it's like we escalate it because it's like, okay, they think this is an isolated incident. It wasn't at school. Yeah. But then once Sydney's like later that night, she does go home and she is attacked. That's fucking creepy. That part is creepy. When she goes home, why she, first of all, why is she riding the school bus in that big ass house? She, she's got a car. <laughs> um, she goes to this house and she's alone. The dad's gone and she you know, takes a nap. I took a nap every damn day after school. What if I w was home alone and took a nap, woke up and, you know, you're getting weird ass phone calls and, you know, somebody's in your house. That's the thing. As a Latino, I was <laughs> never allowed to be home alone in high school, let alone after a murder. I'm just trying to imagine what kind of parents like, yeah, I'm just going to get home late. Be <laughs> home alone after a murder in the neighborhood. Just, yeah, take a nap, have fun. I'm like, where? so where is Sydney's father? Where is Sydney's father? <laughs> it's taped up in Stu's house. Where's Stu's parents? Where are Stu's parents? Thank you. Mm. Thank you. <laughs> I would say he has them tied up too, but that's not true because like, they're just out of town on like in the Bahamas because he's like, they're going to be so mad. They're so you know they're at, coming at, home. Like, uh, they're always at a party or something, right? A fancy yeah. like party that they come home from. Also, okay. It wasn't until I was older that I was like, these are also not like average kids that I grew up with these yeah. motherfuckers are rich as fuck mm. so their parents are like we're off like holidaying somewhere it's, so I'm it's like, always <laughs> funny because sydney could just be in a poor house right that could be the poor house of the movie sydney has to ride the school bus to her poor house on the poor side of town you know <laughs> <laughs> but no it has a, like a huge two-story deck <laughs> have you seen the poor june or what was his name back to chucky uh jake he lived in a big ass house but he was supposed to be broke as hell right you know? <laughs> <laughs> um well that's like in malignant too right like that house is giant. <laughs> but she's poor she's a poor nurse struggling yeah. you know <laughs> that's um, I mean, the worst one is when it's like um like a struggling artist that lives in oh, a yeah. giant fucking loft yeah. like it's like a warehouse live workspace and i'm like do you realize it's like eight thousand dollars a month in LA? no that's a loft <laughs> like, it's fuck? a loft there's the bed in the living room okay angel i'm that so poor. Poor. Help poor. Me. poor i live in a loft <laughs> The original Gossip Girl series where the dad was like, we're so broke, I can't afford to send you to the school. And he lives in a giant, like, three-bedroom in Williamsburg. Make it make sense. Yeah, sometimes on. I'm like, have these people ever lived in an apartment? Because, like, ugh. But I so I'm genre hopping here. But still. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I just, I, I take real issue with that. And I'm so glad that you all do as That's well. That's its own subject. You know, Sydney's house in the third one, her hideaway house. Where's she getting the money for that? Because she's doing a self-help or she's like, she's, what would that job even be? I don't know. She's doing a phone job. That's well, like, not buying a secluded hideaway in California. <laughs> and like, you know, I, 
I promise is the last off subject. That's, <laughs> literally, that's one of the things I gave up on the show Girls after season one. And one of the biggest things that pissed me off was when her parents cut her off, but she still affords to live yeah. by herself in her Brooklyn apartment and like kicks her roommate out. And I was like, but how, how is she paying for this? Like, yeah. she doesn't have a job. She just kicked out her roommate. Her parents said they're not helping her pay rent. Who is paying this rent? Because it is expensive. HBO. <laughs> See, I yeah, will HBO. eventually go back and finish Girls because I know it's like important and it's great. I could not get on board with it because I was like, I can't relate to any of these fuckers and they're just all annoying yeah, me. No. They're absolutely annoying the shit out of me. They're all little watched, assholes. Their parents pay for all of their shit. <laughs> I watched season one and then I watched the final episode just to be like, well, I there watched season one. Yeah. <laughs> you bookended it. You know, it's like, we know, we know where they ended up. We don't know how they got there, but we know this is where they got. Well, yeah. Sydney could just bounce around being depressed in these big ass houses and secluded, you know, spaces because we're going to check in with her in five. And what is she going to be living in? Hmm? Well, we'll see. But hmm. so I think this scene also does a good job of developing Sydney as like our final girl. Like I really I remember it being in every trailer for Scream, the her like spiel of like, I don't watch horror movies. They're all about some big breasted girl running up the stairs or should be running out the door. And like five seconds later is also running up the stairs. But I, I love this scene for Sydney. Like it really, you know, we got her and her boyfriend and that was more like about that, right? It was more like cutesy, rom com whatever. But this is more like showing us who she is. Like when she goes out there and picks her nose and is like, all right, tell me what I'm doing like is very like fuck you try to do something i'm not scared and i love that about sydney right like she she doesn't really get too terrified like she gets scared understandably but like she's more like all right let's do this she's like, seen worse you yeah. know a year before she watched her mother get murdered <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's the thing it's so interesting because it's like you placed through someone who's been through some through something so traumatic in like another experience. And it's like, you're already so emotionally numb from this previous thing. It's like, I'm, and she probably gets harassed all the time yeah. after that. It's like, this can't be the first time someone's prank called her before. You right. know what I mean? It's like um, that kind of over it and that numbness that she kind of has to shake herself out of over the course of the film is like a really interesting, like interpersonal journey to see her kind of deal with. Um, but yeah, it is a great, it's such a ballsy. I don't know. I just love her. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think that's when I fell in love with her as well as like during this whole segment because she's mm -hmm. just she's smart. She's not like aloof to it, you know what I mean? But mm -hmm. it's like you said, she's probably been dealing with assholes just fucking with her and she's seen worse. So she's just kind of like, Okay, let's see. I'm gonna call you on your bluff. And then there's mm -hmm. this like I was like so in love with Dev Campbell, so it's like super hot girl. <laughs> she's like goes out on the porch and then starts picking her nose and I was like, What <laughs> is happening right now? <laughs> <laughs> and like you said, just like such a fuck you. And then it turns into at least my, one of my favorite things about this movie is it's so good at scaring the absolute shit out of you mm. and then bringing in levity and then scaring the absolute shit out of you again and then goes back to levity because immediately after that, like shit gets fucking serious yeah. and then it goes like terrifying again. <laughs> <laughs> and I like, I also like that she like puts up a fight, right? Like she's mm -hmm. not... I mean, like you said, Gabe, I think it is like showing us like she has been through some shit. So like some guy in a mask, she is going to fight back. Like she is going to try to like punch him in the face. And, you know, when he headbutts her, I always think of that like as a pretty rough headbutt. Because yeah. he like grabs her hair and they smack their heads. No, he, he slams it on oh, the floor, slams, which is right, worse, man. Floor, like right. cracking a skull. Uh, that's one thing I really like about this series is that everybody seems to put up a pretty good fight, you know, because... What are you going to do when somebody's trying to kill you? You're going to like claw the shit out of them, right? You know, you're going to you're going to leave skin under your nails and you're going to pull <laughs> hair and, you know, do whatever you got to do. And they do that. You know, ghost face is always falling all over the place. <laughs> well, he's wearing that long dress, too. It's like really not uh, that practical. You could <laughs> just switch to pants. Maybe they switch to pants in this one, right? Do a mini dress, a mini dress and some leggings, like get That's some like, over get like <laughs> sneaker. Yeah, come on now. It'd be, it'd be good. I like the constricting that. Movie. <laughs> <laughs> we, you know what? This could just turn into you know us redesigning the ghost face costume. I'd be down for it, um, just for comfort and utility. Like sweatpants. Yeah, Why? Like, you know, take leave the mask on. Just sweatpants though. Black sweatpants are fine. But they've got to be oh, tight because you don't want to catch them on something. You don't want someone to true. be able to grab Very them and true. pull you down. So like I'm saying, Very like true. leggings. What's a leggings? Let's go to leggings. Leggings. We'll do that. We'll do that. <laughs> All right, go leggings. Let's go to leggings. Yeah. 
Um, I do like how smart Sid is because you know, I mean, like like we said, she 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 met references all this stuff going out the front door, you know, all that. Um, and when she does do it, it seems like you know, as soon as she gets up and she's able to kind of run, she goes to the stairs, and maybe she didn't have a point up or a plan up until that point, but she did like as soon as she hit the stairs because she knew she was going to her bedroom, she knew her door was gonna do the little yeah. You know, um, I always wanted a fucking bedroom. I had doors Same. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> Look at houses. I'm like, get the fuck out, mom and dad. <laughs> <laughs> but she had a damn plan and she ran over to her computer. 911 emergency. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's you know? still like the coolest thing. I'm like, why don't we have that? <laughs> I don't. Okay. So I, Angel, I don't know if you're of the same age of as Gabe and I are. Um, Gabe, did you know what the fuck that was? Because I literally didn't know what that was until like Zach and I covered the first movie the first time. Like I, I was like, I don't know what she's doing because we didn't have that. Like, yeah, you can like nine one one on AIM, I guess. It was like, but there have to be online services too for uh, people who might not be able to hear. Or it's it's, for, it's that's what it is. On the right, screen at yeah. the top, it says for like for the deaf. Yeah, but right, I, yeah. as a kid, I had no idea what she was doing. But she's like on like a DOS program, and I'm like, yeah, oh, yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> that was already <laughs> pulled up, right? It was yeah. already there. So what was she doing right before that? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> like maybe was, she codes. I don't there know. There wasn't even a screensaver up. It was already pulled up and everything. Hang on, <laughs> that's how she makes her money to get the house. Ah, she's a fucking hacker, and she does. Her dad's and shit. not supporting yeah. shit. She's <laughs> buying all this stuff. Her her. Sydney. Five patio sets out on the patio. It's her, <laughs> Sydney Prescott. It really now is like five pays of for all these places. It's crypto, y'all. That's how she's <laughs> been got those NFTs, baby. Oh my gosh, <laughs> dumb racist monkeys. <laughs> oh man, I don't even understand. I still don't understand what it is. I don't Not understand either. what. I don't want to know. I tried to explain it, it the best I could the other day, and someone was like. That sounds so stupid. And I was like, I guess I explained it correctly. I don't really know. <laughs> I just I have a dollar. <laughs> yeah, I, just... I don't understand how like the currency and the stupid pictures correlate. I just don't. I don't. Hey, but you don't have to. Sydney knows. Oh, Go Sydney to Sydney. Knows. She will figure it out for you. Okay. Just give Sydney your you. dollar. You yeah. say, Sydney, here's my dollar. Do the thing. <laughs> <laughs> just turn that dollar into five real quick, <laughs> just like that. So in this scene, we get one of. One of many of Dewey being a doofus because Dewey mm-hmm. comes just like holding the mask right up to her face and they both scream. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but like, so then they go to the police station. That doesn't matter. Yeah. What matters is we get our big Gail scene here. <laughs> yeah. um, and Gail, so Gail pulls up to the house as they're leaving. Um, and she's, we get like, this is kind of like our little like, intro to Gail because we had only seen her just reporting the news right and so we get her being like Kenny Kenny come on and she's like is that is that Sydney Prescott and we assume that Tatum and Tatum already hates her right because Tatum's like I'm not talking to you and Tatum gets in the car and is ignoring her they're leaving the police station and Zachary what is the encounter that I'm gonna let you describe it because this is you just love this so much you do I do I know you do I know you do (laughs) <clears throat> Put some dramatic flair into it. I want you to get into it. <laughs> so they yep. have their first encounter where <laughs> Gail is the smartest one there because Gail is always the smartest one in the room. Gail is like, there's got to be a back entrance, duh. And her and Kenny find the back entrance. As Sydney and Tatum are coming out, they have a little confrontation where she's trying to get a clip from Sydney. Mm-hmm. We learn that what this scene does is also teaches us that Gail has put out a book about Sydney's or is putting out a book about Sydney's mother's murder. Yeah. Right. And Gail thinks that the person that Sydney identified is innocent, which is cotton weary, which is such a weird thing that we see him in a picture and then it's the same actor and it's Lee Schreiber and whatever. Um, but so we get that encounter and she says, what does she say? Like, when's the book come out? And she's like, Oh, I'll send you a copy. And then Sydney immediately punches Gail in the fucking face, and it is so good. I'll Gail's send you wearing a copy. her, Boom. Gail's send wearing you a copy. her green Boom. outfit. Bitch went down. And <laughs> Kenny, Kenny says, "Nice shot." Um, <laughs> <laughs> like I've learned that from watching the screen. Uh, I always watch with the um, the like uh, captions on. The, captions on, right? Yes. Yeah. So you okay. can see, yes. Oh my gosh! Yeah, crucial. He, he kid, Kenny says nice shot and he's like I mean on my camera um, and they pull Sydney away and Tatum does the really good recap of it like yeah. 
Tatum's such like a proud best friend. She's what she's like, bam, bitch went down, Sid, super bitch. And she's just like so <laughs> proud of her best friend for punching this shitty reporter. And I love it. I love everything about it. Which yeah. again, like Tatum is such a realistic best friend. Because isn't that exactly what you would fucking say to your right? best friend after that situation? <laughs> and you'd keep talking about it. I'd keep like, going on. Forever, all night. forever. <laughs> Instead of trying to act like she's just like, doesn't want to talk about it anymore. She just <laughs> doesn't want to talk. But she's, she's thinking about it. She's like, yeah, I got it. I got I'd it. like walk in with got black it. eye makeup and my friend would be like, <laughs> can we let it go? And I would be like, bam, bitch, we damn. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's perfect. You know, Gail is so interesting, right? Because we kind of, do, we, we didn't even go into her whole entrance, right? But she, she is doing this, this book. She's like covering, she's, she's dedicated her whole career right now to the Maureen Prescott story. Um, and she's trying to uh, get, caught and weary you know acquitted or whatever he's already in jail um but she knows that like sid was wrong but still still this is a 17 year old girl that she's harassing and following you around like we love gail but she, she's doing a shitty thing here well yeah, i feel it's... like it was also yeah it was like that era of like like peak nancy graceness where like oh, investigators were like we know and we've gotten to the home of such and such and we're going to be camped out here all week staring at their home reiterating facts <laughs> until we figure it out <laughs> it's like you think she's gonna have a nancy grace show <laughs> in five honestly like but like that to me is the kind of architecture hey, is, right yeah it's like <laughs> she's not a real journalist she's yeah. like doing book deals off like the death of I don't know. I just feel like Florida had a lot of like weird murders and cases where like people disappear, or, like someone killed their husband. And it was like a deep, I don't know. It's Carol Baskin lives in Florida. The whole, it, just all the fucking weirdest cases are in yeah. Florida. I swear to God, the Casey Anthony thing was in Florida. That was close to my hometown. People were so weird about it for so long. Yeah. The one There's that some, this yeah. is based off of, the Gainesville Ripper, was in Florida <gasps> too. So. Yeah, it was. Um, I think it was targeting college students, right? In exactly Jackson like this, like Gainesville, Gainesville. Yeah, yeah. This is what I love. This is what I love that Scream does well, right? Like Gail is being a dickhead, but yeah. Gail is also right. Like when you get down to it, Gail's right. Like Cotton didn't do it, and she's the only one that seems like to care, and you know. That's why I love Gail, because like Gail isn't punished for her ambition. Yeah. Gail is reward like rewarded almost. Like it's like, okay, you got the story and you were right. That's how the movie ends. Like, yeah. and she was right. So I don't know. I this is what I love about this because she can be an asshole, but in the end, she's also right. Like that's I, I like I like that shit because a, a a lamer horror movie would not have let a character like her be the one that is correct, right? Mm -hmm. And another movie, she would have been killed off in the first one. She'd be like, like oh, she's an ambitious female reporter. And then you like watch her get like horribly yeah. beheaded and her yeah. head like rolls down the van and like gets run over by the van or something. You know? like, <laughs> she, it would have been her, gratuitous. Her too. and Kenny together. Kenny would go <laughs> first, but she would get follow like yeah. shortly yeah. after. And, and that's so interesting about this movie is that we do get these characters that go for so like like Dewey and Gale as characters in any other movie would have died in like the first act they would have been characters that died pretty quick and it's wild that they even made it because these movies center around the group of teens they don't center around the reporter who's following them and then the the cop you know the doofus cop by the way Dewey I I can <laughs> I, I appreciate a Dewey in one and two but He's isn't he very much like like scary movie Dewey? Like it's like the same thing, almost the same sort of acting. They didn't even have to really fudge it. Sometimes <laughs> when I watch Scream, I get it mixed up with the scary movie, and then I'm waiting for him to like <laughs> run, run, run run into the room with like the vacuum, like <laughs> you know, like and then I'm like, oh, that's that's not this movie. Sometimes that's scary I forget movie. <laughs> he does it because they do. Like she gets Sydney gets a call, and <laughs> it plays out exactly like that. And the only thing that's missing is the fucking vacuum cleaner yeah. in his head. <laughs> His hair is more put together and he's missing the vacuum cleaner. But otherwise, like the energy of it is like right there. It's <laughs> like you're pulling out your gun for a phone call. Like... Yeah. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we, uh, we did talk about this at the live show too but i also very recently learned that scream was originally going to be called scary movie yeah um yeah and i think it was maybe wes craven that talked to kevin williamson out of that i forget mm -hmm. but like a lot changed um a lot changed from that first draft but it's like wild that that to me is like the parody name now um yeah. and right. the parody series that was launched essentially by yeah it's great well you know for the photo i did for scream too um which is like one of my favorite photos I've done for these of like all the characters sitting in a movie theater. Everyone kept saying, 
oh, you did scary movie. And I'm like, no, that's a, in Scream. They're sitting in the movie theater. Like. <laughs> and that's a fun thing that it has these like super meta moments that like you would see in parody. Mm-hmm. But I feel like it kind of elevates those references. It doesn't like fully take you out, but it feels very self-aware. And I yeah. feel like that's a very careful balance to strike, especially with this first script. But it was also interesting because I'm pretty sure like Scream 2 and 3 were kind of laid out. And I love... Yeah. Uh, an installment in a trilogy that has its eye on the long game, right? Like we're going to see Gail become a foil to Sydney in a way that makes them these two final girls that are like compliments and constant antagonists. It's like, it's really complicated things. And I think if you can kind of like look beyond and and map that out, you're going to get a richer story throughout the trilogy rather than like killing everyone off in the first movie and be like, Oh, this made a lot like fucking ginger snap three. Like, (laughs) It just doesn't happen the way this sort of happened. Like three, especially especially 25 years later in a fifth installment, the three main characters still around and still coming back and none of them have skipped a, a, a you know, a, a movie. It, it just wild, wild. And it, it just speaks a lot to what the actors sort of think of this movie too, right? Because I'm sure Nev Campbell kind of rolls her ass every time she gets a call for one of these, you know? <laughs> but... Who else is going to play Sydney? And Sydney can't not be in a, a Scream movie. <laughs> Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I, we just like, I mean, I think you and I had talked about this before we got the trailer, Zach. Like, okay, maybe like they're just in a cameo role, but like you have to have them. You can't not have yeah. Sydney yeah. and Gale. Like, yeah, absolutely. Uh, where, where do we go after this? We are back at school, right? With this whole, because Billy's been released from, from jail and they have the, Again, again, it, they parody themselves, and I just forget which one's which. So this is not Tori Spelling's scene. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I still think of Tori Spelling in this, but like her, because it, it plays out the exact same. Like her and Tori Spelling, and and uh, who was it? Luke Wilson have the yeah. same sort of dialogue. This dialogue, they nail it. Even, even this dialogue in this one is just so weird. It's like, you know. What did what, what did Billy say? Something about her mom, and she's like, "Your mom, your mom's alive. She ran away. She's not lying in a, <laughs> a grave somewhere." He compares his mother leaving to her mother being <laughs> brutally murdered, and he uses the phrase, I think, something along the lines of "just get over it" or like "just move on." Like oh, yeah. your mom's dead. Like, but it's just time to move on. Like, yeah. and it's like, what? <laughs> When's the last time y'all watched The Princess Diaries? I was gobsmacked when they're they're walking I did not know she's, that walking, was be the question she's walking with her friend lily and lily's like or she's talking about her dad and lily's like what you're not over that it's been three months <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh what God. a dark disney film i had no idea <laughs> like oh three God. months since your dad died you're not over that yet um, <laughs> and so that, it always reminds me of this though <laughs> but so we get the scene in the bathroom yeah. um with as you mentioned, Angel, the cheerleader who talks about Billy being her bubble butt boyfriend. <laughs> um, and I, as a kid, this scene scared me so much because like, I don't know, like gross bathrooms in high school and like, bleh, like I hated using the bathroom at school. And so I was always like, the killer could be in the bathroom at school and murder me. Um, and I like that it's, and we revisit this and it's three that we revisit this scene, right? Where she's in the bathroom and she can, yeah. Yeah, it is in three, oh, where she can hear yeah. a whisper in the bathroom, but then it ends up being the the girl that's playing her. And I always think, like, it's very weird that she just runs out. And we don't, like, like they, they were in that room. If you just, like, tell every adult to, like, go over there, the, the, the person's got to be there, right? Oh, like, yeah. I don't know. It's just Billy in the girl's room going, what, man? I didn't kill nobody. What? Yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to see if I could borrow some moose. <laughs> <laughs> misunderstood (laughs) (laughs) that scene feels very heathers-esque to me just the way that the girls are talking about her and like the the phrasing that they use for things like her bubble butt boyfriend and it's just very like a heathers kind of vibe yeah like it's scary again like it's kind of funny but horrible mean i want to like murder all those girls and then (laughs) gets very scary i I don't like the cheerleaders i think the cheerleaders are the only thing that sort of takes me out of the like the feel of the movie because the characters are not like that in this movie Mm -hmm. um it would have made more sense for it to just be normal normal students who are talking you know like this about sydney's but like these are like you know stereotypical cheerleaders and Mm -hmm. like oh you are so pathetic you know like all their fucking dialogue is very back to the 70s you know 
<laughs> it is weird dialogue, but I think it's also, I don't know, again, it shows that divide between like Sydney and like yeah. these these high school archetypes that would usually be the lead in this film or like yeah. would have been the early kill, I think. And it's funny because I think I read somewhere else that like Kevin Williamson fought to keep the scene in that I think either um, the production studio or someone told him to take it out. And he was like, I think we need to have this moment with Sydney because it was like a little bit of character development for her. Mm -hmm. But I hadn't thought of it that way that you could achieve the same thing with maybe a less, I don't know, a less stereotypical delivery. But I do kind of, I don't know. I kind of like that like wink, wink, like, <laughs> Like we gotta have the cheerleader somewhere in the high school slasher. And there, there she is, hiding in the, talking about bubble butts. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a Favorite little bit of a castle. throwback to like all of the the high school kind of movies yeah. that we watch. You know, where it's like, oh, there they are. We didn't see them, but they, they right, go. Yeah. They do go to this school, and there, there they are. We don't have to see them again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I hope we see it's... them in the new one. I hope they're back. They didn't leave Woodsboro. They're still there. You know, <laughs> did it? Oh, yeah. One yeah. of them's a real estate agent. <laughs> 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 one of them is, is has joined an MLM. They, you know, uh, Lula Row. <laughs> they have very big hair as well. All yes, of them. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> one might have had her husband arrested for what he did on January 4th. <laughs> gotta wait till Scream 5 comes out. I think uh, probably both of them. They went on a, a buddy's trip to, <laughs> to DC. <laughs> Second honeymoon. <laughs> but so then uh, our principal is murdered. We get the principal. Oh, honey. Um, the Fonz is we get his scene where first he's angry at the students, whatever. Um, Very then, angry. Red yeah. herringly angry. Some yeah. would say. <laughs> <laughs> I've um, watched enough Scooby-Doo to know what a red herring <laughs> is at this point in my life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, a thing that I only noticed recently is that as like a joke, when he's looking through his closet, one of the coats is the Fonzie's coat <gasps> in his closet. Oh. Weird. Um, and he... We also, so in his scene, we also get our, it's, well, that's Wes Craven, right? Yeah, the Wes Craven cameo, like dressed the janitor with the Whoa, Freddies. Love yeah. That. yeah. <laughs> um, and, you know, I often think about how that call went with Henry Winkler. Cause like, I, I mean, like what you said, Gabe, like they added in his death because I mean, basically he just had the scene of yelling at the students or like when he was interviewing uh, Sydney. It's so weird that they like they were like, yeah, pick the Fonzie. Like, let's let's do him, and being like, yeah, and also you're gonna get murdered, and like you're gonna get stabbed a lot. And I feel like he probably was like, sounds fun, guys. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> what else was he doing at this time? Of course, that yeah. was gonna be fun. He's like, Fuck yeah, man, how bloody <laughs> you want me to get? Because <laughs> they mean, hang him up by the goalpost, yes? don't yeah. they? Uh, of course, of course. <laughs> right now, um, we can do a whole screen movie over over the Zoom. I'm surprised that didn't happen during the pandemic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um you know, he got hung up up by the uh, on the gold post i'm i'm surprised they didn't show anything with that you know i always like wish we had seen like some kind of wanted to does that exist at all like was that ever anything that was shot oh, and yeah. it just we never saw it like I, I i hold out hope for this but it probably wasn't too disrespectful <laughs> of yeah henry winkler never <laughs> <laughs> and those sick little fucks that are like oh yeah let's go look i'm like oh my god what's wrong yeah. with you freak? you're like oh do you have room in your car <laughs> killer 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 fourth yes no i mean listen <laughs> this is a school full of killers we're just focusing on one story right okay. now okay all right this makes so, sense. suddenly we're all wendy williams talking about the killer <laughs> There's that really amazing shot of like the little twinkle in Henry Winkler's yes. eye with the ghost face reflection. And I was like, yeah. oh mm. my God, amazing. Okay, carry mm. on. <laughs> yes. Gotta okay, shout out think? the cinematography. Got to, got yeah. to. Yeah, got to do <laughs> it. What do you think of the video store scene? I think this is where we get Randy's first little breakdown of like how shit works, right? Yeah. Yeah, I love it. I love that it's taking place in what looks like a blockbuster. Like I just rewatched it. I have, the, I have Screams 1 and 2 and three on VHS. I had to look. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, could not find Scream 4 on VHS. I don't think they were. Really <laughs> um, no. But I do, I, I just sort of, I don't know, we're back in like this sort of world that harkens to this kind of meta commentary, right? It's like you're surrounded yeah. by scary movies. Like you kind of feel like you're in one. Like this is, I don't know. It's It leans into that game in a, in a really smart way, again, without kind of like breaking the rules of their reality or like that sort of immersiveness of the story. Um, I don't know. I think it's really fun. I don't, I feel like Randy was better highlighted in Scream 2. I feel like he didn't get that many great moments in Scream 1. But um, <laughs> this video store moment was definitely a, a memorable one. I don't know. Yeah. I liked it. I thought it was fun. 
I mean, there was more focus on him in Scream 2, but right. I still think yeah. everything he got in this, he really did oh, like scene steal. You know, like yeah. how many scenes really is he in in this one? He's by the fountain. He's at it's the like video three. store. He's yeah, it's not even that much. We don't yeah. get a Randy walking home from school scene. Yeah. yeah. And it was and wild, I, too, because when I saw this, I had like already seen the Jamie Kennedy experiment on TV. And I was like, <laughs> who is this guy? Like, he's so unfunny. I hate this. And I saw Scream and I was like, I love him, even with a goatee. Like, <laughs> Oh, right, man. it's weird to say cool. Jamie Kennedy really nails it, but he does. <laughs> Killed it. Great Even role. with the goatee is a bold statement. I'm I like, oh, that's like love. Like that's a go- love. Goatee. I, I <laughs> love it. And he gets more sexy for me in two. Oh, it's it's horrid. Did Matthew Lillard have any weird facial hair in this one? Or am I thinking of another uh, 90s film? I think he's just got baby face in this one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Matthew Lillard gets hotter post screen. If there's <laughs> and then it's it, but it's like a bell curve and then it, it's like we're going he's still hot. But it's like you know Are you I mean? sure? Like, because he's watching this and he's like <laughs> No, I love him forever. I was watching him in what was it? Um, Good Girls, and he's like still he's like fully just le- like dad. But um, Ian, have you seen them? I have not. No. Oh, please do. Please What's watch. What's it called? It. Good Girls. Yes. Good girls. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Really Christina, good. a truly a great Christina Hendricks Retta uh, vehicle. And then who's the third? She plays maybe on. Red Is May Whitman? Is May Whitman? May Whitman. Right? They're great trio. Great trio. Together. Because I mix up May Whitman and Linda Cardellini all the time. <gasps> I, in our Hawkeye coverage, every episode I've been like, I love May Whitman and Hawkeye, and everyone's like, I do imagine May Whitman in the MCU. <laughs> <laughs> like, Squirrel Girl, is that you? <laughs> just like she, Linda Cardellini plays his wife, and I always yes. see. I just had to stop myself. I was like, wait, which one is it? Because I just, I'm, I don't know why, but those two actors, I have like, I can't tell them yeah. apart. I'm sending you their headshots and you just like hang them up yeah, just, next to your just got computer. <laughs> Another set next to your bed. So it's the first thing you see when you wake up in the morning with their names on the bottom. <laughs> she would have, Linda Carlin would be a good addition to this franchise. Oh, yeah. She's a good actor. She'd mm-hmm. kill. She don't do anything. Women, women, women. they're both great. Yeah. <laughs> Bring them both into screen five. Yeah. You know, let's do it. Do it. We're done. We're done. We got Hayden uh, Penetier in there. We have uh, room. She's going to be there. We're. I won't accept another answer. This is going to be there. She'll be there. <laughs> Watch. You know what they're going to fucking do? You know what they're going to fucking do? They're going to have like a quick Uh-oh. news flash and her picture is going to be on there as part of the ghost face victims or something like that. And that that's going to be their answer to us. Probably. Yeah. Oh, I see that. my goodness. Throwing things at the screen already. I'll do we're it. not going to we're not going to be happy about it. Zach. Boo. No. Piss. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> at the video store is like really good, though. Um, so yes. We got like Stu, Billy. You know, kind of, it, it's just, again, these are the killers. It's obvious. It's so, like, clear here. It's so weird how obvious it is, right? Yeah. Especially on rewatch in this scene. Like, they're doing with Randy what they do with Sydney at the end. Yeah. Like, right? It was practice. <laughs> it's like they're two gay cats playing with their prey. Yes. <laughs> like, this is what this movie's oh. about. They're two gay cats. Two gay Who cats, said though? it? Who said it? Somebody said in one of the these that we did that um that Stu gives Billy head and Billy just like well, yes. well, how did they say how you 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 probably remember Billy. <laughs> that Billy is not gay and Stu okay. glows him because yeah. Stu's in love with him and Billy's like yeah whatever like yeah. that's like that would be their dynamic Jarrett <laughs> Jarrett Weisselman said that and I think that is a hundred percent correct yes, that is the dynamic they fully yeah the gateway drug was watching taxi cab confessions during a sleepover they started your <laughs> you know what I mean Stu escalated Billy was like whatever no home and here we are. Oh my gosh, I haven't thought about taxi cab confessions. Yeah, I can 100 see this as like their most accurate dynamic. I'm like, this all makes the all the sense movie. in the world. There's <laughs> deleted scenes somewhere. We'll find them. Yeah, we'll we got it. Like, how else Henry are you get <laughs> yes. Those are the two things that I need to see. <laughs> uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, <laughs> Yes, yeah, so I, I can remember <laughs> as a kid, I had a crush on Randy because I thought he was the cool one because um, he like knew about movies. Um, and I feel like now we've all become Randy on Twitter, right? Like, <laughs> gosh, Randy would thrive on Twitter. Honestly. <laughs> Is Randy annoying though now? Yeah. Would Randy be annoying now? Yeah, probably. 
Yeah. A little bit, but we'd still love him. You know, like, yeah. yeah. (laughs) Well, it's like you need a Randy when you can't Google. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that is true. Yeah. It's more fun that way, also. You know what I mean? It's like, What's the thing? The thing, and then he's like, da 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 da. What gives you like the year and the fucking the, the date and the time that this thing came out? Uh, yeah. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> he's doing yeah. all of the podcasts under the sun too. He's got his own podcast. Oh, mm. he has like ten podcasts, and he's like yeah. guesting on fifty podcasts a week. <laughs> <laughs> but not really because he's dead. Right. <laughs> also, there's that. Yeah. Um, oh, also, that he's part. the thing. I, another thing is that he's an unlikely character sur- to survive, right? And I do like that he survives this because he's like, he's not a romantic interest for anyone in the movie. Yeah. He's kind of just a fucking nerd, and he also gets to survive. And granted, he dies in the next one, but he gets to survive. And like him and Gail, especially, are two characters that would have died in a different movie, right? Like mm-hmm. yeah. in any other horror movie at the time, they would have been characters that were dead. Absolutely. Like hundred percent dead without question. <laughs> yeah. I also yeah, think like, oh, no, go for it. Oh no. I was just going to say, I feel like the Randys usually do just enough to get like the final girl in the love interest to the end. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then they're like, you know, Oh, there goes the comedic relief. And then yeah. it's serious. Like, uh... I gave you my knowledge so you could thrive <laughs> and live a happy life together. Good you yeah. should have read the comments. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> um, and they kind of have that right in three he's got the videotape he comes back in a videotape to be like hey you you're you're not gonna survive this one sydney or however he puts it uh what's but, what's yeah. his sister's name his sister's gonna be in the new one uh that's mia's friend in princess diaries that's lily <laughs> Oh, it's Heather Heather Mott. Is she going to be in the new one? Everything comes back to Princess Diaries. No, she's not. (laughs) Bullshit. Where did you hear this? Because I don't see her on a poster doing the little scream mask thing. I'm Googling. Hold on. I am too. I don't believe you. (laughs) I forget that actor's name, but she complimented my shoes on the subway. Heather Matarazzo. I love a Heather Matarazzo. Love her. Are we all looking it up? Yeah, I'm fully looking. We only need one. We only need (laughs) one. I know. I was like, this is Damn. why. This is why you need a Randy. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Gabe's a Randy right now. I'm the Randy right now. I was gonna say, there's also an actress from Yellow Jackets. I think her name is Jasmine. Yes, Savoy. Brown. Jasmine yes. Savoy Brown. Mm. She. I saw her in this cast, and I was like, oh, okay, maybe I can handle some teenagers. In this. Yeah. I was like, I don't need any young people on a stream. <laughs> I've already I can handle anybody from the Yellow Jackets show. Anybody they want to put from that show in this, I'll take them. Just so, bring in the entire cast of Yellow Jackets. Yes, you know, I know you guys already finished this movie, but let's bring in the entire Yellow Jackets we, cast and do. You some know what? Sheets. We're gonna get on. We'll make a fan film for Scream Five. You know, <laughs> we'll do our own version of we'll it. Love that. <laughs> See. <laughs> If she she wasn't announced, but she she said that she was in it. Ian's alternative facts. Because <laughs> <laughs> I even, I'm even seeing a thing that says like, Look, why do we think they haven't Reddit. announced her? Oh wait, I would accept her. I'd be oh, it would make sense she, though because she's his sister and yeah yeah. No, there, here's an you, article. Yeah, when you Google it. She's on. She's listed. Yeah. Oh, is it's it's her her mom then? It has to be her mom. What? It would make sense for her, the 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 new Randy, to be right because it's her, it's his mom. Yeah, that would be. Uh, I'm yeah. into this. I'm into it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, it says, I'm kind it, it of says, excited. It says aside from the main three, also set to return are Scream Three's Heather Matarazzo, Scream Four's Marley yeah. Shelton, and Roger L. Jackson. I've been trying to avoid anything on this movie like the plague because Halloween Kills. I knew the entire thing by the time I watched it. Like they put out so much shit about it, and now uh, they've been really good about this one. About they've been good, really- but they're still putting things out that I I just don't want to see anything. You know, I don't want to catch anything and. But like get... Halloween Kills, I knew that fucking oh, it was awful, man. The nurse was died because they show her yeah. in the car, and then they showed her body hanging, and it's like, yeah. okay, but why'd you show us that? Did a lot. Um, I've but tried also to that avoid as much garbage. of this as possible. What was it? <laughs> yeah. I've been trying to avoid as much as possible too, which yeah. is hard because of work. But also, I'm like, I'm trying not to think too much about theories, so I don't want to try to. I try yeah. to have as little information as possible because I can't help for my brain to then be like, oh, yeah. then that connects this and this and this and this. And I'm like, well, now I've ruined it for myself. It's hard when you're making content about horror, right? When that's yeah, kind of little, what you're makes it into, a little difficult. because yeah. <laughs> it's just I don't know. But like, the re- the rest of the movie is just little talking scenes, right? Her and Tatum, um, Dewey and 
I do want to point out, wait, we get the, this is, the, for me, this is the only yeah. scene where I'm like, why? We get, not only do we get the scene where Tatum and Sydney are talking on the porch, where she does like the, oh, like a West Carpenter movie. And we see mm. Ghostface fully in costume, like in a bush. Weird. But Weird. when they're in the supermarket, he's in one of the aisles. Is, when they shut he the, is. They shut he the door in his reflection. Yeah. And it's like, but, but like everyone would see that. Like It's... <laughs> Uh, I don't got an answer. <laughs> the only way, the only way to excuse that, I guess, would I have the same problem as you do? But I'm just, I'm reaching here. The only way that you can excuse that is that people they've already shown all these little assholes donning True. the costume and running around. Oh. So you could just be like, oh, all these fucking idiot teenage boys are wearing this and running around town. So we just even like ignore go it with because that. it's a thing. So. I go with that. I, I think it. that's it. Yeah, <laughs> especially the one out right outside of. Tatum's house, you know, watching <laughs> Sydney. I think that would be just an asshole. I mean, kid. I could excuse that that one over the grocery store. I'm yeah. like, where did you do the quick change? Where are you hiding the outfit? <laughs> How did you get there? I just, it's a lot. It's a lot, a lot. But so right before we end, I we got to talk about, I love, 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 love that we get a payoff for when they talk about making a movie. And he's like, I could see you as like a Melanie Griffith and sh- or Meg Ryan. And she says, with <laughs> my, my luck, I'd, I'd be did. Tori Spelling. <laughs> and then mm. like- I love so Tori good. Spelling. So I'm happy that she was, game. she's yeah. so down. She's like, she's fuck it, down yes. for everything. Like, if she was the opening kill in this next one, I'd, I'd cheer my lungs <laughs> out in the theater. That would be amazing. I, you know, I feel like that would be such a fucking fantastic callback. Like, right? Like, yeah, <laughs> she'd probably try to get Dean McDermott to roll in there, though. You know, it'd probably be like a double murder or something, something bad. That's so <laughs> she needs. We need the double. We need. I, the double I would watch paycheck. that. I would watch it. <laughs> I would like to see it. <laughs> <laughs> He's riding her coattails a little too hard. When he was on Drag Race, it was so like, clear. He was like, I'm just here with my wife. He's, like, he's got me this cool She's guy. She's like, dumping yeah. his ass. She's going off and doing all these other things by herself now. So she's he's gone. Yeah. Good for her. Good for her. <laughs> um, Billy and his penis do not deserve you. No. Thank you. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> What else do we have though? Where it's think, just uh, those it's just those ones, right? Because we have Dewey also talking with the other cop about with the sheriff about uh what's going on. As in he's town. looking his ice cream cone. Yeah. And it's just like those <laughs> moments weirdest. that are kind of just like, why do we have those? Um, I do like that they put a curfew into effect during all of this. Um, because I think that ups the kind of and that's realistic, right? Urgen- like, it's yeah. the urgency of it, right? Like the adults are saying something's wrong, guys. The adults are saying something's wrong. Don't have house parties, but where's Stu's parents? We we don't fucking know. Where's Sydney's dad <laughs> in the in the closet, bound? The parents that we need have disappeared, They're but other gone. adults in charge realize the severity of this. Exactly, you know, all the parents are gone, but Sydney's whore mother. You know, <laughs> let's talk about her for a couple more years. <laughs> <laughs> Poor lady had some sex like a couple of times. Literally. A of <laughs> also, like the uniformity with which the town agreed. They were like, her mother's a whore. I was like, people yeah. split up and have affairs. Like, that's the centerpiece of the nuclear family is the affair. Like, it's very on. much like, are there 20 people that live in this town? Because yes. it's the talk of the town, like, for years. Like, you all are like, too rich for that to be the only scandalous thing. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, I'm wow. like, your husband was probably doing lines if off of that lady's ass, like last night. Like, why is that not coming up? Like, <laughs> exactly. And they never let it go through the whole <laughs> series. She gets a whole movie, a whole movie de- dedicated to Sydney's whore mother, <laughs> and a book, <laughs> and a book, and and more mentions in the fourth one. You know, much of the dark. Fair enough. Okay, well, wrapping up. Conda, unless you have anything, Ian. Uh, I want to ask, who gets the better part of this middle section of the movie? What character gets the better part of it? Scene-wise, performance, you know, whatever. Randy, just for that video store scene. Okay. <laughs> 
Gail too, actually. I feel like we kind of get a little a little taste of her to where we're like, it's that thing that we were talking about earlier where it's like, ugh, press, ugh, like that kind. But then you're like, oh, but I love her. She's kind of a badass yeah. and we like, she's a go-getter. We like her. <laughs> yeah. About- yeah, this is definitely Randy and Gail's section, I think. We get some great Tatum at the beginning and then we saw, like obviously some great Tatum at the party. Um, But I think these are moments where like ancillary characters that you would not think are as important to the plot do become crucial to everything. And it's just really, really fun to watch. You know, I think it does have some slow moments, but I, I appreciated the character development here because I feel like it, it it had forward momentum. It was always germane to the plot. It was always contributing something. Um, And so I, I just, yeah, I'm excited with the talky bits of this, this one. I don't mind it. Yeah. What about you, Ian? I think Sydney. I think Sydney. Really? Like, yeah, I think I'm we get. I, I think we get such a good picture of Sydney, so that way going into the last hour, we don't need like she doesn't really get a lot of like she's being chased. Right, that's most of her for the rest of the movie after this. But I think they do such a good job here painting her, and I think we can look back and be like, oh yeah, Gail's great, but like. Even like if we're just taking the scene, like when you're watching it as a first watch, you just think Gail's an asshole. You don't know she's right. Like she, and she is right. And that's how we eventually learn. Oh, like she was pushy, but she was fucking right. Like we, we don't know that yet. So we're more, we don't know that till the end. So for me, I would say Sydney is more painted fully here where it's like, she doesn't give a shit that these guys are prank calling her, but, and she will fight back if someone's trying to attack her. And like, we learn that she's smart and she's take no shit. She also just like wants to be left alone, right? Like she just wants to like lay on her couch and watch some TV, which like who who can't relate to that shit? Um, so yeah, I would say Sydney. There you go. Who would you say, Zach? I'd say Sydney for everything you just said. <laughs> I want to reiterate it. Perfect. I love when per- we agree. Perfectly <laughs> said, but I, th- I thought you were going to go with Gil, but I'm really happy you said Sydney. <laughs> there you go. All right. Well, thank you both for joining us. And um. Zach, where can they find My Bloody Judy on YouTube? Uh, My Bloody Judy on YouTube at uh, youtube.com slash AZB bonus features. And what about on all podcast? Pa- pa- I did this last time too. Podcasting <laughs> platforms. Yeah. You can find uh, My Bloody Judy on SlayerFest 98's podcast feed, on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and other corners of the internet. And you can find us promoted on SlayerFest 98 social at SlayerFestX98. And what about you, Angel and Gabe? Where can everybody find y'all? What you do? What you? Where you been? Who you are? Everything. I won't tell you where I've been and who I am, but I will tell you. <laughs> you can find me, <laughs> Fangoria.com. Lots of good shit up there for you guys. And on Twitter, Horror Girl Probs. <laughs> Nice. I love that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram using the handle Gay Bones. That's G A Y B O N E Z. It's a nickname from college. I never thought I'd have to That's share. That's cute. I like that. Yeah. It's his name Am on I... Scruff, too. It is. <laughs> All right. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> that one's too too secret. Um, but I also have a website. <laughs> you can visit it's gaybiz.gay and it works. I promise it's a real URL. <laughs> and you can see sketches I've written and clips of things. It's lovely. It's a lovely time. Cool. all right well thank you guys so much for watching we really appreciate it um i guess you have part three after this but this has been the wrap-up for our screen coverage <laughs> my god i feel like i'm running on fumes now man um <laughs> thank you guys so much for being here and we will see you next time